So what I like doing when I'm taking out a bit of wood like this um, is actually take a dovetail saw and actually saw out the parts next to the line. Uh, I usually do this with a Japanese dezuki saw, which is the Japanese dovetail saw, but I'm trying to work on my Western saw skills. So I'm going to use, you know, a Western style dovetail saw and um, also the floor rip saw has, um, not just the floor rip saw, but dovetail saws will typically have the brass backing, which keeps the plate a lot straighter. Um, same thing in the Japanese version, but uh, particularly using my floor rip saw because one, it is just gorgeous. And two, it is literally the nicest thing I've ever held in my hand. Um, it's just an incredibly comfortable grip, so. Here we go. Uh, typical pinch technique to get the plate uh, right where you want it. All right, so I've cut uh, my saw lines um, on the edges and up to the depth that I want it to be at. So now we just take our chisel or the widest chisel that can fit this. So I've got, a, my largest is a one inch chisel, so I'm just gonna make some relief cuts and then start popping out uh, this bit here. You know what else you need? A mallet. So you make these relief cuts um, just to make sure you don't blow all the way out. Um, where you don't actually want uh, the cuts to be, which in pine can be very easy to do. And especially when you're not taking your time, which is also something that I do frequently. Patience? Haven't heard of her. So what I'm going to do here is take my chisel, just kind of go halfway down ish and then just keep kind of going halfway until I get too close to the depth that I want and then I just clean from there. So that's the plan. Let's see if I completely ruined this for myself. It's always important to wear eye protection for this because the chips just start flying everywhere. Especially when there's nuts like that. There, see, not too bad. That didn't take very long, did it? And then rinse and repeat. Okay, we're basically just about an eighth of an inch away from the actual depth that I want. So now we're going to do this. Just use this nice stabbing motion. Oops. Assuming that my workbench will let me do that. Actually, it's not the workbench, it's just not. So we're gonna have to work around that, but typically you just make short stabbing motions like this to leverage out what's left of the waste until you get to the depth that you actually want it to be at. But we've got this knot to contend with, which is going to make life just a little difficult. And so to handle this knot, basically better to come at it at an angle like that with your chisel bevel down and it's not going to be completely flat because it's a flipping knot but it'll get close you can get real close and I know you can do that because plenty of the boards in this bench have knots because that's what happens when you get your boards from the big box store
Right, it's only been a, like maybe less than a minute since I turned off the camera to finish this up, but I mean, it's done. It's not the neatest, and there's like a bit of a bulge here at the knot, but that's why you have a nice sharp chisel that can actually uh, handle kind of flattening down knots that are going in crazy directions and whatnot. Um, and also to take care of any of the edges and stuff so you can cut all the way through um, down. And that's why I keep a strop next to me when I'm doing stuff with edges. Um, so, I mean, I could actually keep going and do this next uh, half lap with the chisel as is right now with just a quick strop. But, you know, uh, especially since there's no knots in this one, but uh, I'm just going to strop it up, make sure it's sharp, and then do the next one. All right. See you around the workbench when I show you my workbench.